Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Disgusting Abuse of Anne Askew Throughout the reigns of the Tudor kings and queens, there were many women who were treated terribly by the monarchs and by people in power. Some women were executed in brutal scenes for being accused of being a witch, and many were burned at the stake for being heretics. But there was one woman's story who was known for being incredibly brutal, and at the hands of a number of men inside of the Tower of London. She was horrifically tortured, almost to death, in one of history's most brutal torture devices. Anne Askew was a woman who was linked to Henry VIII's sixth wife, Catherine Parr, and was considered a radical Protestant preacher. She was executed in brutal and terrifying scenes at Smithfield in front of a huge crowd, but her ordeal inside the Tower of London has cemented her as the only woman to have been tortured inside one of history's most brutal prisons. However, Anne Askew was wronged and treated terribly a number of times in her life. Anne was born in 1521 in Lincolnshire in England, and her father was a wealthy Londoner. Her father was part of Henry VIII's court and was a gentleman who regularly attended, and he was also a man who acted as part of the jury for the trial of Anne Boleyn. Inside the Tower of London, a number of men sentenced Henry VIII's second wife to death for incest, adultery and treason. Anne Askew's father was one of these men. She had a number of other siblings and stepbrothers, and she was also distantly related to Robert Ask, the man who managed to galvanise the Pilgrimage of Grace, a religious protest against Henry VIII and Cromwell, and their policy of the dissolution of the monasteries. So she was linked to many important and influential members of Tudor society. But when Anne was 15, she experienced tragedy as her older sister Martha died suddenly, and it had been arranged that Martha would marry Thomas Kyme, but as she died, her father would not lose money, so Anne Askew was forced to marry Thomas Kyme in the place of her dead sister. It's likely that she did not want to do this, and she was virtually married off just so her father could save money. However, their marriage was certainly not a happy one. Anne was a very strong Protestant at the time where it was very dangerous for people to be so. It was the start of Henry VIII's Reformation, and it was becoming more accepted, but not to be strongly and radical Protestants, as it was dangerous and was deemed too much. Anne spent a lot of her time reading documents and books, criticising the Catholic Church, and she then began to preach inside the city of Lincoln. In these sermons, she created a significant amount of controversy in the city, and her husband was a devout Catholic. Because of this, the pair would regularly argue over points of religion, and Thomas Kyme and Anne did have two children, but the marriage was not happy, and there was a lot of arguments in their home, and when Kyme read his wife's Bible, he was furious. Because of this, he threw her out of her home for being a Protestant, and then Anne, being a headstrong woman, tried to divorce her husband. She was thrown out and was made homeless, but at the time it was not accepted divorce, especially for a woman to divorce her husband. But to try and obtain this, she moved to London and rubbed shoulders with many other Protestants and influential early Protestant preachers and reformers. Here, Anne continued to study the Bible, and she then continued to preach. However, in the March of 1545, Thomas Kime, her husband, had the local officials in London arrest his wife Anne. She was then taken back to Lincolnshire and was forced to stay there. However, Anne, despite being practically held a prisoner in her own house, managed to escape, and she went back to London and started preaching Protestant sermons again. But in 1546, she was arrested yet again. However, in the May of 1546, she was arrested for a third time and was then taken to the Tower of London. Whilst held inside of this infamous prison, Anne Askew would go down in history as the only woman to be tortured there. At the time, there was a significant degree of suspicion by courtiers of Henry VIII's sixth wife, Catherine Parr, as a number of Catholic officials believed that Catherine was turning Henry VIII to Protestant and was leading the king towards committing heresy. Because of this, many radical Protestants were rounded up and were tortured in attempts to get them to name Catherine Parr as a heretic. Anne Askew was one of these women, and Stephen Gardiner ordered Sir Anthony Kingston, the constable of the Tower of London, to torture her. Kingston did not want to do this and complained about torturing a woman 
as it was illegal at the time. However, despite this, Lord Chancellor Thomas Risley and his assistant Richard Rich took over the rack. They threw Anne onto the barbaric rack device, which has gone down in history as one of the most savage. The rack was a brutal device which dislocated joints, snapped bones and tore ligaments. Even the sight of the torture device was enough to get people to turn over information. But Anne Askew was hurriedly tied onto the device. Anne was subjected to a horrific racking and ordeal, and she refused to name other people who shared her religious beliefs. It was said, according to Askew, that Then they did put me on the rack, because I confessed no ladies or gentlemen to be of my opinion. The Lord Chancellor and Master Rich took pains to rack me with their own hands till I was nearly dead. I fainted, and then they recovered me again. After that, I sat two long hours arguing with the Lord Chancellor upon the bare floor. With many flattering words, he tried to persuade me to leave my opinion. I said that I would rather die than break my faith. Anne was brutalised on the rack and was racked a number of times and was completely broken by her ordeal. She was left on the floor and was questioned further for two hours by the Chancellor and he continued to grill her for being a heretic. There was almost certainly a sadistic element to Anne's torture and it's claimed that the pair who did this got a form of pleasure and enjoyment from punishing a woman. They were clearly enjoying what they were doing and they reduced Anne Askew to a broken mess but her punishment and torture and brutal treatment would continue. From the Tower of London, she was taken to a private house to recover under house arrest and was offered chances to recant and take back her radical Protestant ideas. But when she refused, she was then taken to Newgate Prison and it was said that she was still broken by her torture. On the 18th of June, 1546, Anne Askew was then convicted of heresy and was then to be executed by being burned at the stake. On the 16th of July 1546, she was taken from Newgate to Smithfield, where she was to be burned at the stake. It was said that she was still horribly crippled by her tortures, and that she could not walk at all, so she had to be carried to Smithfield in a chair, and every movement the guards made, who carried her, caused her a huge amount of pain. This was a woman who was being executed and had been brutally tortured because of her religious beliefs. As she got to the stake in Smithfield, she had to be provided a small seat on the stake and she was then placed on this before she was chained to the stake by her ankles, knees, waist and then neck. As the huge crowd watched on, baying for her blood, Anne Askew's executioner helped her ordeal be over a lot quicker than it could have been. He tied a bag of gunpowder around her neck, and as the flames would have risen, this would have exploded instantly, killing her. Alongside her, three other men were executed on stakes at Smithfield, and as the four burnt, it was said that, credibly, am I informed by various Dutch merchants who were present there, that in the time of their suffering, the sky, in abhorring so wicked an act, suddenly altered colour, and the clouds from above gave a thunderclap not unlike the one written in Psalm 76. The elements both declared wherein the high displeasure of God for so tyrannous a murder of innocence. Anne Askew's death and torture was in vain and was such a waste of a talented and intelligent woman. Bishop Gardner was summoned to meet with Henry VIII regarding Anne's execution and he spoke of the concerns about his wife's religious beliefs. Ultimately, Anne was tortured to try and implicate Catherine Parr as a heretic but the king later reconciled with his wife and she looked after Henry VIII in his final moments. But Anne Askew lived a very tragic life. Her husband treated her terribly and also ordered her arrest at one point and then she was brutally tortured and executed at the hands of power-hungry men who were incredibly horrific in their treatment of Anne Askew. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.